This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to get geeky, talk tech, and talk about love. Today on this Valentine's edition of the awesome cast, episode 336, 336, yes, um, I am here in the Mayhem studio in Pittsburgh, PA, in the underground Mayhem bunker, with, uh, in studio is John Chichilla joining me, hanging out. Back in oh. Studio A. Back, I got a wide shot on you, so everybody <laughs> can see your, your surroundings and what brand backpack you have. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, back in the studio. How you doing, Chilla? Pretty good. How are you doing on this fine, lovely day of love? W- wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, so, uh, he is a gadget guru at PNC Bank of. Ah, I'm not supposed to say that. Yeah, at Big Bank that. International. <laughs> I'll bleep that later. <laughs> uh, <it's, laughs> Take two, take two. Uh, he is a he is a gadget guru at Big Bank International Incorporated Esquire. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. All with back back with us. He is the 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 actual journalist amongst our myths. He is Mike Pound of the Post Gazette. For what, for what that's worth. Also, how you doing? All right. Good to have you back again, sir. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I would. Uh, my my wife is working, so we're not doing anything really, especially romantic. Um, and I thought I'd, I'd come and talk with you guys. That's okay. I made my wife work over here as Missy God. is on the is on the 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 production <laughs> side with us here tonight. Missy Sorg, Abby flaw on the Twitter. Yes, this is this is Sorg's romantic overture for for Valentine's Day. In his defense, he did take me to a movie earlier. I did. Okay, that's good. So that's we went good. to see John Wick. Yes, great something, Valentine's movie. Something romantic. <laughs> so. <laughs> There you go. But this is, uh, like I said, the Awesome Cast. We like to get together here on a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live.awesomecast.net. You can go there. No matter what technology we're using for the week, we'll embed it or put you a link in right there at live.awesomecast.net. And uh, and also, please follow us on the Facebook. Uh, we, we are also broadcasting on Facebook Live. Our friends like Wheels joining us here today uh, in the chat room. People pop in and put their comments in and, and stuff that they like to share with us all night long. So we encourage you guys to do that. You also subscribe to the podcast form over on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Google Music. I think I did that backwards. And then also video versions, not just on the Facebook page, but also on the Awesome Cast uh, YouTube page. You can check out that. And plenty of interviews we're doing for the Awesome Chat, some other businesses around town and outside of town. A lot, uh, a lot of our series uh, uh, lately with uh, from Hermitage, PA, up at the E Center at Linden Point up there in Mercer County, north of the city. Uh, so get, get an idea of what's going on all around in technology. You can also check us out. We are currently, but I think changing very soon, um, um, on Thursday mornings after Funny Money on the Rivers Edge, PGH.com. I'm sorry, the Rivers Edge.com. Rivers Edge PGH is their Twitter account and uh but keep an eye out there for any schedule changes uh thank you for them to them for carrying us and big thanks to our patreon supporters matt weller joining us on the coffee club level that level gets you gold content we talked about a little bit of old school video games and apple store experiences on this week's awesome cast gold you can join us there at the coffee club level at five dollars and also a big thanks to michael fedor uh joining us as a fan of the show at the dollar level please go to patreon.com slash awesome cast and you guys can uh, uh contribute there as well but if you don't want to do it that way just tell your friends about it say hey there's a cool podcast is talking about technology or whatever or or something or whatever Whatever you like about it, because sometimes we talk about naughty things on here. Um, that seems to be what everybody looks at on our YouTube page, it seems. So, uh, but please just share the show, like the show, 
um, you know, even if you even if you already listened to the show or watched the show or anything like that, put a link or a favorite on your on the tweets or the Facebook posts. That helps get us out there. That little bit helps us get out there. If you see the events come up for upcoming episodes, just hitting that inter- interested button puts that in front of more people in your circles, and we really do appreciate that. Um, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Who's got the most romantic one? I have I a feeling that's. That's a uh, tough call. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. <laughs> um, let's go. Okay, I'll start it. Listen, this is Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. And I was really impressed with some of the things I was seeing uh, come out about Valentine's Day. Okay, not many of them, but one really caught my attention. <laughs> so, and this is usually something I think Katie would bring up if she was here. But uh, uh, Pornhub makes the news a lot on this show. Free Pornhub Premium on va- Valentine's Day. I literally don't know what Pornhub Premium entails because I feel like does can't you get most stuff for free on here anyways? But you get ad-free experience and faster and better streaming quality. Oh, oh. With, with with loads of full HD scenes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I'm afraid to click anywhere else on this uh, full page <laughs> ad thing, uh, but I think you get the idea there. Uh, secondarily, I, I think Pornhub in general is my awesome thing of the week. Not just today, uh, but uh, <laughs> I came across along with this an article uh, from this past week. Um, Pornhub is now doing sex education. I have not. I didn't have the time to dive into this, but they have some great articles, and they actually have a couple linked right here. Um, what is consent? Good topic, okay. right? Good yes. topic, right. right? Five tips. Five tips to help adult aged versions get a partner. So, like, it's it's like this is like helpful for a certain segment of of the population. Practical, sure. informative. You know what I mean? Like the the. So the kind of people that are probably on Pornhub. Um, there was there were parts of this where the first article that I was reading, I, I didn't get the article that into the into the notes specifically that talks about this, but they were saying like this is really this is really good considering like one anecdote was in school all they told told you was was uh, about about periods, sex is bad, and girls are smelly, and, and that was it. You know, so there's not a lot happening there depending on where you're at, right? Uh, so this could be some interesting supplemental t- uh, uh, content. So and maybe something teenagers will find anyways. Um, in related Probably. news, in related, they're, they're actually they're actually Mike. They're actually really smart about uh, engaging with with mainstream media people like me. Not that I, I've had an opportunity to use them, but I get. <laughs> I get I get I get news releases from them occasionally. Okay. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's generally um, it's stuff that they always are careful about couching in a way that would be acceptable to a you know a, a mainstream media outlet. Um, it's you know stuff about digital trends. It's stuff. Uh, there were a couple uh, kind of funny things about uh, usage, like during um, uh, the site visits during presidential debates uh, last year. That's that sort of stuff. But I, and it's been a little while since I've gotten a release from them. But but they they work really hard and, and generally do a pretty good job of of sort of presenting themselves in a in a way that um, uh, that that some publications, perhaps not mine, but some publications would uh, would would find uh, to be to be useful. I'm sorry, there's a video popping up, uh, and, and it's the Pornhub. Hello, it's the Pornhub. I know, I'm so scared every time that, that, that <laughs> something like that pops up. You had 50 pop ups, uh, but uh, but but <laughs> oh, I got I got the block up. I got the, <laughs> especially during the show. I make sure we have a pop up blocker. Uh, but uh, welcome to Pornhub Sexual Wellness Center. So I mean, it's even like nicely branded when it comes to this. Like mm-hmm. going into rep- reproductive health, your body, STDs, sexuality, relationships, real talk. I'm kind of curious about the real talk. Um, and there's actually, like, I guess they have a, a sex you know, doctor uh, uh, involved in this. So, so they're getting it from, uh, let's see, here's our director, Dr. Lori, to introduce the site. Well, there you go. Um, and, and I remember, like, we've had everything from Pornhub from, like, their vir- their, their their virtual reality to there was a, a sort of phone game that was, like, a Fitbit tracker to... Um, masturbation uh so that was really interesting uh you know they, 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 these guys are like you know we talk about like porn being kind of like like the the you know gateway of technology but the, like these guys are definitely pushing limit and it's not just you know f- for a site that just has a bunch of d- dirty videos like there's some innovation happening here 
in, mm-hmm. in how some of those are delivered and how they're getting attention, right? Well, and and they, I mean, you're right. I think you're spot on because when you look back, I mean, things like um, on-demand video that everyone enjoys today, things like um, Blu-ray, um, all those technologies were decided by the porn industry or or created as that part is, of the porn industry. Well, I mean, it was like it got a big kind of literally the only um, like DVD technology. I feel like in some of the production that I've done in some of our safety training, like we did some like some of the menu systems and things you could get really get kind of in depth and you can author these interesting interactive experiences. And other than that, maybe a couple like kids DVDs, like I have a Ninja Turtle DVD that has a maze game on it. Um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, like seen it stuff like, like games like that. Mm-hmm. The more, the most interesting ones are the ones the porn industry were doing the, the choose kind of choose your adventure kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of, <laughs> is it, did you get a message from her? Uh, apparently Dutters is, uh, really jealous of our discussion while she isn't here to take part. So she, she had a work thing tonight and this is right up her alley. So ask her, uh, can you ask her her thoughts on the wellness center, uh, uh, porn hub situation and the free porn hub for, for Valentine's day. And maybe we can get a comment from her here in the middle of the show. Um, but, uh, hopefully she's listening at work about us talking about porn hub. That'd be tremendous too. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, no, I like they push those kinds of technologies and I haven't seen, but I, I, I wonder what they have done with Blu-ray as well. Well, no, no, they decided the Blu-ray. So they settled. If you remember the old HD DVD versus Blu-ray, versus Blu-ray. and only Blu-ray allowed it. Right. right. And so they and they backed it from mm-hmm. the get go. So, I mean, they go back to beta versus VHS, right? They right. backed VHS. Right. Um. So a lot of that, and I think we've talked about it on the show before, the the book Sex Bombs and Burgers, which is pretty much how all technology has either come forward from the military, the porn industry, or fast food companies. Don't mix those. <laughs> Don't mix those. But yeah, so. but yeah. So I mean, they are a, a key player in the way that technology rolls out to the to the normal consumer because mm-hmm. usually it, it's it, that's one of the three places it's built first. Certainly. So uh, check that out. Like I said, I, I think, geez. So if you go to Pornhub.com, I'm trying to find a safe in for this. Because they, 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 they said it was linked on the front page. And then like, like there's, <clears throat> that's how dad did it. Yeah. Uh, but if you go to oddly Pornhub.com slash sex of all things, uh, you'll get to straight to the Pornhub uh, Sexual Wellness Center. And it appears like, like it's not like, I'm, I'm pulling up the video now, and I'm afraid to show it. But it's like it's just a well. Actually, no, it is just a welcome from their from their doctor that 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 that's behind this. Uh, so like it's like this could be supplemental material that that one could use. Um, just don't go to the main dot com <laughs> network. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but no, I, I think that's good that there's a looks like a pretty level headed, like serious kind of response to something like this. Um, you know, that's that's around their business. I think that's really cool. So. Uh, so from that, uh, crappy, I'm going to put yours last. Just okay. That's cool. You see why, uh, (laughs) Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is not necessarily Valentine's day related. I I did have something in the notes that we could talk about later if if we feel it's appropriate or have time, but, um, mine actually, there's a VR desktop for Mac, Ooh. which I thought was it, it, it reminded me of having like that very architect in the matrix type experience. Um, it pretty much takes and builds out multiple displays in VR. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously with the, the VR goggles on, it's going to give you full 360 degree view. Um, I don't necessarily and I know what you're going to say, you know, I don't want to edit video with with such poor quality <laughs> right. resolution. I, I don't think this is something for, for a work environment like I would deal with. But I looked at it as, could you imagine having eight tweet decks up and multiple, like Facebook and all kinds of content or content monitoring? Or if you work in security and you're looking at security monitoring or any kind of diagnostic displays, pretty much having like eight monitors all around you or just wall to wall. Imagine you being covered floor to ceiling 
mm-hmm. and, and 360 degrees of monitors. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. I could see myself personally using this for work with, you know, I, I monitor an internal blog type community. Um, I'm constantly working on PowerPoints. I'm constantly doing a bunch of different things, spreading this out across seven to 10 monitors would be awesome Mm -hmm. and there's no way i can get seven monitors on my desk you just want a wall of monitors i just want a wall of monitors and and i see a lot of um like stock investors and traders and stuff like that where where they have like the six six monitor displays some people in our security environment have uh, have some pretty big um display setups so i I thought it was pretty cool and at a 20 dollar price point for the software um it seems pretty cheap it it is only for the Oculus Rift dev kit right now. Um, they do plan on coming to the HTC Vive, um, and then I'm hoping we see this on some other uh, some other devices. I'm interested too to see what Samsung does with this as they. So I'm starting to hear rumors coming out about the S8 and it having kind of a desktop mode where you can dock it, and it actually goes into like a displayed desktop on a monitor. I'm interested to see will they make something with the galaxy gear and this type of environment that gives you like a virtual Android environment that allows you to, to spin up apps and all kinds of stuff. It, that's the, that, that, that's right. It, 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 the biggest thing with it is it is nice that you could do multiple, multiple monitors, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like working around multiple monitors as you'll see in the studio or, or in my desktop space, you know, before I, uh, but I, I love the idea of just being able to just plug one in and it's talk about maybe GPU being kind of a um, a little bit of a, a, a overhead problem on, on, on Max, uh, for instance, and saying they're not supporting the Oculus for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I love the idea. My, 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 my question is, and maybe this isn't much different than I'm looking at monitors all day anyways, having that thing on your head for an extended period of time becomes an issue. Yeah. And of course, as we go, these things will get lighter and a little more comfortable and everything, right? So I think... I think, I think it's got a lot of potential. But again, this is really, really is 1.0 at this point. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I love that that people are working around this. So, now, is this? Um, so I need an Oculus Rift headset and, and twenty bucks and twenty and bucks a Mac. and twenty bucks and a Mac, which costs more than twenty <laughs> bucks. Uh, so I said said that I can't, and I know the resolution wouldn't be quite so usable. But even even just to play with it a little bit, like you can't plug this in, plug in uh, the, the the Samsung VR. Uh, uh, for instance, for it, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe eventually, because it is kind of Oculus based. So the interesting thing too is, is the the guy that made this um, actually built a they call it a custom state of the art VR framework <laughs> mm-hmm. to make sure that the Mac can keep up with kind of a, a smooth experience. So obviously through software, I, I know they weren't thrilled about um, officially supporting. The Mac GPUs, but obviously there are kind of software workarounds that you could they could implement should they choose to. And I love that you included the GIF <laughs> of the Matrix uh, going on here too. So I know it's not too big, but you get the idea. Um, well, it looks that looks. I don't know if it's a GIF, but it looks more fake than usual. It that. was it was just a GIF that I found on Google. That's great. Um, yeah, we'll see where that goes. I, I just, I mean, uh, crappy. Do you do you see an? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this could be helpful for you guys in in, in the space where you need to kind of keep an eye on things happening throughout the day, right? <laughs> it's uh, the the stuff that I work on. Um, I mean, I, I always have just so many freaking tabs open uh, during the day uh, because there there are you know the several different social channels that we're watching. Uh, we're obviously watching the website. Uh, the watching the, the back end of the site, there are, are metrics we're, we're taking a look at. Um, and then, you know, you, you've got uh, watching other news sites to, to make sure you're not missing uh, national or international stuff. Um, when, when we, uh, when we moved from our downtown location to, um, uh, to the, the place where we are on the North shore, I'm, I, I actually, I lost a monitor, uh, which, and I still kind of miss it, even though it's been, it's been a year and a half at this point. Um, uh, even the ability to have a, a couple monitors up at once, uh, was helpful. Having a wall of them would be a pretty, uh, uh, it would be, it would be even better than a pretty cool thing. Um, it would actually, it would actually be helpful. Um, 
Yeah, imagine and, and, uh, imagine every one of those tabs as a as a monitor, virtually yeah, that yeah. you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, that would uh, and, and you know we've got we, we we have one editor who's kind of responsible for social media stuff. So uh, you know if he if he can look at uh, you know three or four different things at one time, that's going to be helpful. Um, you know you've got the, the editors who are responsible at any different point for for the sites for our site's homepage. Uh, so monitoring social, monitoring other news sites, and then you know uh, the, the the actual page itself and the back end. That's that would all be. It would be awesome to have all of that stuff right there in front of you. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, and it looks like Crappy, you got a pretty um, a pretty Valentine's Day <laughs> article. This is, I, it, and I, and I wrote in the notes that this is pretty much inevitable. And, and actually, um, I didn't I didn't know about this until today. But uh, this has been a thing since last spring. There's a, a gentleman. Um, his name is David Goss. He's a, a, a reality TV producer. Apparently, he noticed back a year ago uh, a site not related to his called BernieSingles.com. dot um, <laughs> uh, This is a dating site for Bernie Sanders supporters and um, uh, you know people of that political persuasion. He immediately uh, uh, snapped up the URL, uh, uh, Trump, uh, I want to get this right, trumpsingles.com. Um, he was thinking at that point, it's eh, kind of a joke, but he got a little attention. And then Trump's uh, the Republican nominee in the summer is like, well, okay, we'll go through election day. He's going to get crushed. And then, you know, the joke will be over. And, and now it's not. And he has, uh, as of, uh, according to the CNET story, um, he has uh, uh, had uh, 26,000 registered users Jeez. as of Inauguration Day. And that was, uh, that, that's getting close to be a, a, a month ago at this point. Um, if you take a look uh, at the site, it's a, it's a, you know, kind of a Trump-esque, uh, you know, you have a, a, obviously a, a, what appears to be a well-to-do couple and lots of shiny gold things. Um, you can do quick searches. Uh, I didn't see anyone I recognize doing a, a, a brief search for Pittsburgh. I'm just going um, to generally <laughs> plug something in. <laughs> but you can, you know, you can, uh, you can, um, uh, you, you can do quick searches like that. Uh, that'll that'll that's designed to get you sucked in. Um, I think the uh, full access to the site is uh, twenty bucks a month, um, or you can do little uh, bits and pieces and searches for for uh, uh, credits for like three bucks at a time or something like that. Um, and and it's it apparently this is something that he is going to continue doing for the next four years uh, because he's a. Uh, He's uh, making a little money, and the, the CNET story again says that he's uh, you know, going to be able to, to beef up the site a little bit and um, you know, actually do some advertising. But uh, so this is a thing. Um, if, if you are of that persuasion, um, I, I did not check to see if, if, <laughs> of, if of the Trumpian really, persuasion the, is that what Trumpian you're getting at? Okay, of the Trumpian persuasion, um, and and I did not check to see if uh, Bernie singles is uh, is still a thing or not. Oh, I, I don't know why it that. wouldn't be. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, but, uh, but if you're of, of this persuasion, um, you know, uh, head to, uh, Trump singles, uh, dot com and, uh, uh, maybe, uh, find your, uh, find your, uh, significant other sometime the next, uh, Oh wait. Uh, okay. Bernie singles, the revival of Bernie singles.com is coming soon. There's a landing page right there that you can, you can get a notification. Well, I'll get that in a second. Oh, wait, wait. there I, it is. I, I do have to comment that yes. I, I pulled up the Trump singles.com as I was sending it to Katie to check out in a text message yeah. and how the iMessage now pops up like a, a preview of the site. Mm-hmm. And it does have on the Trump singles.com making dating great again, making dating great. Yeah. And it's a little, yeah. little gold American flag there. And then some, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they're, they're having fun with it. I love it. <laughs> so I, I might be checking uh, this out. <laughs> wow. Well, there it goes. I can only imagine like the automatic advertisements that are going to get generated on the website you visit from now on. And- <laughs> oh, no. No, we're gonna, oh, no. Gonna oh, no. Gonna find out. Gonna find out here shortly. Yep. Yep. Uh, I need I need a I need a different account to sign in to look at all these websites on the here. <laughs> it's probably it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so about Pornhub, we've talked about Trump singles. <laughs> else can, it all comes what else, together. What else do we have for it the all for this week's together. <laughs> We have pizza. That's one thing we I have. Was around say pizza. Here. Pizza we would have be pizza. the one thing we're missing. We have Slice on Broadway. Our good friends at sliceonbroadway.com uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. 
uh, supporting guys like Chilla coming into Studio A here, right? Yes. Yes. So delicious. So delicious. Join the VIP club. Join the VIP club. I, I, yeah, I've been starting to get some deals out of that, actually, mm-hmm. right? It was National Pizza Day last week. They had a, a, some, a special on, on slices. Uh, but please check them out right here in Beachview, of course. Nope, that's Chilla. Uh, right here in Beachview along the tracks. Um, right on Broadway Avenue and of course Carnegie PA on down on Main Street and PNC Park right off of the Roberto Clemente Bridge. Uh, north side, yo. North side, yo. Uh, so go get it. Uh, check it out. It's the uh, it's, it's 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 great stuff. It's great pizza. We go snag it whenever we can um, out here um, and uh, support our Super Bowl uh, pizza habit. That's for sure. Uh, oh, so yeah. go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Good people. Good pizza. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. And I believe, keep an eye out, we'll probably be sharing, but I think there's a uh, best in Pittsburgh is coming around again. So uh, uh, before we share the vote on them in, in uh, those uh, proceedings as well. Missy, we had a, a article shared about self-propelled life-saving boys to re- retrieve <laughs> drowning swimmers. Yes. Brandon Minot. Yes. Uh, He's actually been contributing to the show quite recently, quite a, quite a few different things. And this is kind of cool. The video that he shared was actually over on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And I found a, an actual like news site so we could pull up some more information about it instead of just the video. But essentially, it's – think of a, the, a drone in the water as a buoy to save people. Hmm. So it, it goes out. You, you launch it. And then it can, instead of putting people out into the water, it drives to where the oh, people look, need to be saved. And it just zooms around. Look yeah, at it, it just go. it just zooms around like a little. Look at it go. Like a little boat. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting thing. So yeah, thanks Brandon for for sharing that over to us. That's great because then then you're not um, um, putting more people at risk at that point, and and you get to just zoom them back. It, it, presuming, of course, the person is 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 responded enough that they can they can snag onto it. So. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. So it is the um, uh, what was it? You safe? Yeah, I think that was the name of the company. You safe coming zone uh, to the Nora, the Nora You safe. So look out for that. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> also, Google figured out a way to zoom and enhance like they do, they, like they do in the movies. I saw this everywhere last week. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this is this is them using their all those all that cloud server power. Uh, that they've amassed over the years, but uh, if you see like a, a super super, what I think this was like an eight by eight pixel picture, mm-hmm. and they were able to figure it out up to uh, 30, 32 by thirty two, and uh, what was it? It, it? It's pretty impressive. I, I like what they call the technology: pixel recursive super resolution. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Because they have to make it sound like something that's on TV, right? So, so, so I guess what, how they're actually doing this is they actually look at one of the eight by eight pixels and they compare it to a large library of what it could potentially match against, against, and then kind of fill in portions of the pixel with what they've found it to appear to be. So, so, so it's a pretty cool technology, and it's actually using like a search and match algorithm interesting. to then pull in. So basically, they have they have there's so many faces in Google Images or whatever they're drawing from, right? Mm-hmm. So they're basically saying, oh, they're kind of looking the other way and saying, okay, this picture, if you dropped it down to eight by eight, would look like this, right? Mm-hmm. And what matches it close or close enough? Yes. And then is it rebuilding from that point? I think it's rebuilding. It's not like pulling the whole other face. It's pulling portions of the other faces based yeah. on because even what they're so so because if you look at it, if you have the the picture up on that website of the actual three, it's the eight by eight, the thirty two by thirty two, and ground truth. So the the eight by eight, it built the thirty two by thirty two, and then the one on the right is like the real yeah. picture. So you can see it's off a little bit, but real close. But it's pretty darn close. So finally. When we when there's no more laughing when there's like the enhanced that image mm-hmm. on Law and Order, say, yes. or NCIS, or, or or one of those shows, or those BS things where like, oh, they turned that that pixelated thing into an HD image. How about that technology? Um, you, you still can't do the um, 
uh, what was the movie with Will Smith? Enemy of the State, where they're like, grab a pic, they grab a picture and they're like rotated around 180 degrees to see the back of it. And the computer like tries to figure out based on the, 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 the front of the object what the back of the object would look like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because I, I watch a lot of the like Law and Order stuff that he's talking about, which is yeah, why I think why does. he brought it up. Yeah, and she I does. love when they pull a license plate off the back of a car, and the car was parked, and they just move like the camera angle a little bit, and then they zoom in, and they've got this perfectly clear picture of a license plate, and I'm looking at it, going, "Yeah, that didn't happen." <laughs> no, nope, not even a little bit. Nope. Not even a little bit. But now it can. Yes. Yes. Now it's <laughs> now it can happen. There you go. Uh, what do you think about this crappy? Is this something uh, you see using in your your line of work? Uh, we have um there there are um, kind of pretty strict ethical rules about tinkering a whole lot with photographs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's we it's it's some some really basic um digital enhancement stuff might be helpful um particularly if we're if we're using uh, older images that that we pull up and um they perhaps not the resolution that we would that uh, we would like to to see for uh these stuff is being shot you know today um mm-hmm. but but generally we, we don't take her a whole lot um so it would be an interesting thing to see if it could be helpful maybe with with uh, old images and making uh extending their life a little bit uh that that might be a cool thing to look at definitely all right. Also uh, shared with us, Matt, uh, one of our patron supporters, Matt Weller. Uh, um, this is something that I just put in my shopping cart and is definitely going to be on my wish list. Um, this is a um, I, so I mean, we, we watch a lot of TV. You ever see the kind of like slow moving tracking shots like, say, uh, the beginning of House of Cards where it looks like it's sliding over and then they time lapse on top of that. Um, that's like typically kind of a rail system. That's used in, in video. And uh, uh, Matt shares with us um, Grip Gear's, hold on, Grip Gear's Movie Maker set. So it's a tracking system, a mini tracking system, only uh, uh, 99 bucks, uh, was 150 um, that uh, <coughs> works on your iPhone. Or any, any, oh, any or camera anything, phone for any, that any camera phone, anything small. Uh, that can go on something like this. Um, this is awesome <laughs> and pretty much exactly the kind of thing that I, I, I love to do. Because I mean, I've been trying to been using, like I said, get, using my phone more than the you know prosumer cameras, um, just to kind of see what we could get done with these, right? And uh, even there's a little bit of a time lapse in the little bit of video here that looks kind of like that that time lapse sliding kind of idea. So um, it, it, those are really cool kind of smooth um, uh, moving side to side shots. You can do a lot of good setup with that. If this is, man, this it, GoPros as well. Um, so I'm guessing it's anything that actually has the screw mount. Yeah, something. In the bottom. So it has to be and something small, small enough, right? So yeah, that cord on that webcam over there is long enough. We could put a whole track right along the front of your desk. Oh, give this epic, <laughs> this epic, this epic reveal shot for for mm-hmm. chilling whoever's on the couch mm-hmm. going across there. That'd be like, we, we could do that. We could seriously <laughs> do that. If we could get some of the higher end ones and they have the screw thing on them for the Logitechs. Mm-hmm. You know, I have the 4K Brio now. There you go. There you go. Oh man, we're gonna have the most <laughs> epic podcast shot ever. So uh, Missy, add this to the wish list for equipment. And <laughs> like I said, it's in my cart already. I'm definitely looking. Wow, this is yeah. Th- I've been wanting like you know, the, I've basically been wanting the big version of this for a while. Um, but uh, this this could this could really kind of up the game. Don't they make Just these where they're like on little train tracks? Yeah, they, there's there's yeah. Li- literally like how yeah. they do this is like a giant camera on a car on a track, you know. And then there's smaller versions of it for you know people on this level. So uh, sorry. Uh, but someone, someone who shoots like say the a beer show would would yeah. this could be really yeah really helpful yeah. really helpful and <laughs> at, at ninety nine bucks um also really manageable that's what do you shoot hmm. what do you shoot that beer show on uh I just I have a, I have a couple I have a camcorder I have a a, a, a Nikon point and shoot uh, camera um. I do a, a, some supplemental stuff with with the phone. 
Mm-hmm. Um, this would work with any of those and it would be so easy and oh my God, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> and goes in the kitty for that. So um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's, that's for the Patreon. It helps support there a little bit. Mm. One, so I, awesome. I guess we can say thank you to Matt for uh, helping with not only our Patreon support, but also helping Sorg figure out what he needs for the studio. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank exactly. you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Adding on to my wish list. Um, another interesting one that was shared by, yep, Brandon This did this one. So this is kind of early. They're talking about this is uh, uh, still needs to go for a Kickstarter for this, but it's called Retro Blocks. And they're calling it the modular console that lets you play ret- retro games. Okay, uh, so the idea is it will you you get components or or parts like modular parts of this, and it will support NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Atari, uh, Super Graphics 16, Sega CD, things like that. Uh, so they're looking to update it. Uh, they're looking looking at go and make it, and this is something that's been happening for a while. There's actually a really high end Nintendo. Is that in the show notes? The high end Nintendo I shared like earlier this week. Um, like like basically the patents have lifted on a, like the Nintendo Entertainment System, Genesis, things like that, and people are making their own basically that can play your old cartridges. And I think that's that looks like that's kind of what this thing is. Um, but they're they're making it so you can basically build out or build enough of it like there's a base system and the components to or, or slots or whatever you need um to play all those different systems can can uh, work out from there so a pretty cool idea kind of interesting i i wonder how expensive something like this would be uh but i would love because I, I i don't have i literally do not have a way to play uh, like sega cd cds that i've had because the sega cd always breaks and it's hard to keep up all these old systems. And we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of connecting things to CRTs earlier on on gold uh, for Awesome Cast this week. Uh, I, I'm interested in these options and see what they can do. It, what, it, whether this becomes real is questionable since it is they are, um, like I said, planning on doing a Kickstarter, but they, they don't even have a Kickstarter going at the, at the at this point. But oh, thanks, Brandon, for passing that along. What's that? I said it's pricey. What's it going up to? I didn't catch the price 450. on it. 450 Oh, you should see the one. <laughs> You should see the one that we had on the. Uh, well, actually, it was like 400, 700 bucks for the Nintendo one that we were looking at. Just Nintendo, just NES. So, Yikes. what's that, Mike? Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. I, hey, people are serious about the retro gaming and I, to play it good and right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you can definitely see that. All right. Uh, down the line here, this is a cool project. Missy, I was reading this too about NASA. Um, they, NASA, so there was, there's basically been a scare about science the last couple of weeks. You know, we all know that from, if we're on the internet, right. And, uh, and, and a concern that like all you know, the, basically that all the stuff that NASA has done, some of these other groups have done might go away or be hidden. So diehard coders have rescued NASA's earth science data. So I don't, I don't know the full on for this, but they basically had a hack weekend of some sort, right? <laughs> And uh, they were pulling out all the, I think, publicly available Earth science data and cataloging it. Cataloging it. Um, these are um, uh, groups in about uh, 20 different cities, um, data refuge groups. And, uh, it, and again, just kind of drawing that out so it isn't dependent on if something happens to NASA at this point. Um, in this case, uh, UC Berkeley uh, Wired had visited, and there were about 200 adults there um, willingly... <laughs> Willingly there to to uh, 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 dive into uh, climate data to bring it out too. So um, I think I, I think it's a you know a really good cause um, and to kind of draw that stuff out because this is uh, government data. It should be publicly available, right? For that stuff, because because yeah, of, yes, yes, uh, yes, well, absolutely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Mike, you can probably lean lean to this a little bit because you've been watching a lot of this kind of stuff. This is uh, this is viewed as as kind of a protection. Um, some of this data can be subject to a political spin, right? Um, and and the the fear is and the and the, the wired. Uh, the, the piece in Wired, uh, Wired.com actually mentions that 
Um, it, it looks as though some uh, of the, the, the publicly, publicly available data had already started to kind of disappear. Really? Um, yes. Wow. Uh, I, I don't, I, that's, I, 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 I don't know if that's actually the case. Um, that's always something it, it's like we talked about the last time I was on. That's always something you want to verify before you, you, you get too excited about this stuff. Um, but I, but I think this is a worthwhile thing. And I think that is a, that is a, it is a real concern, uh, that, that some scientific information, uh, whether it's NASA, whether it's stuff, uh, collected by NOAA, which is the, 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 the parent of the national weather service, um, that, that, that collects, uh, climate data, um, that that stuff could 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 be defunded, it could go away entirely. Um, it is it is it is uh, it is subject still these days. It is still subject to, could be subject to to kind of a, a political uh, political whims. Um, so anything that can be done to to preserve that stuff uh, is is a is a helpful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there was a, uh, by, by the day in question here that Wired visited, they said they had uh, collectively loaded about uh, 8,404 8, 8, NASA and DOE pa- web pages in- onto the Internet archives, which then become part of the Library of Congress because they, they run yep. that, um, uh, effectively covering the entirety of NASA's Earth science efforts and, uh, and, uh, and even parts of a panicked friend at the national park service had tipped them off about a huge data portable that contains everything from park uh, visitation stats to GIS boundaries to uh, inventories of species. So there you go. Um, Yeah. You just, you just brought up an interesting comment that just sparked a question in my head Mm -hmm. that the stuff is cataloged in the library of Congress. Yes. Which is also another governmental entity type of thing. Which is a very public one, too, though. That's very public. That's, I get that. Yeah. But. And not one under attack currently. Not guess, currently. I, 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 <laughs> under, <laughs> un, okay, let me, let me, let me temper that a little Wasn't bit. There, under perceived attack. I, I think. There, what's, what's, oh, no, go ahead. With, with the, the information on the Internet Archive, uh, I, it, it, is, it is generally more widely available. It doesn't take an army. Uh, it doesn't take a hackathon to get to it, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I think uh, if if at some point there there is discussion that um, information that is stored in the Library of Congress might might be threatened, um, it is easier at that point to to retain it elsewhere because it's it's much more easily available. Okay, wasn't there a massive um, data backup that was done? to canada i'll have to find find it i don't i don't know that sounds familiar yeah yeah early early on when they started talking about climate control and some of that data there was a number of organizations that that backed it up to some kind of canadian archive (laughs) as well to make sure that there there was some data integrity Uh, if if that's the case that's that's probably a good idea Mm -hmm. certainly all right, Chilla, what else you got here you want to chat about today? What else do I have here? Um, sorry. I'm right. trying to get to that section of the um, document. There, there we go. Um, so if you look at the Forbes story and Watson um, in there, uh, IBM's uh, worked with Watson in a number of ways, and Watson's kind of IBM's AI. Um, they're really tailoring some of the Watson platform to specific needs. Um, I know there's been a lot with healthcare. Obviously, we've seen Watson on Jeopardy, um, the ability to search and, and, and mine data and then bring it, bringing it back to correctly answer questions. And, of course, there's the X Prize, which is, is basing here East Coast-wise here in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is basically kind of like how can we use things like Watson and AI um, to, to serve certain things, right? Yes, um, what they've tasked Watson with now is review of cybersecurity. Okay. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Watson can go through um, the the millions of documents and terabytes of information to bring insight into vulnerabilities or things that are going on uh, across different, uh, I'm guessing, corporate entities as well as um, government but it can Watson can monitor that, but not and and also bring in alerting. Um, if you've ever looked at like vulnerability management and things like that, and the number of websites that you have to visit and places you have to check 
for new and upcoming vulnerabilities, it, it's pretty time consuming. And then do they apply to you? Um, this is something I think that could, could definitely be useful. Um, I'm interested to see where they take Watson next past this now that they've done healthcare and cybersecurity. But I thought it was a pretty cool way of, of using the, the tool and the AI um, to definitely help where humans can't potentially work fast enough. Um, I, I think it'll be, I, one thing that I think would be interesting is if they, if they had Watson catalog the internet and kind of made him an alternative to Google or her, uh, I'm guessing Watson's a he, um, but I, I think it would be interesting to see how they could turn that loose into general search. Obviously it's really good at pinpointed search like healthcare or cybersecurity or something of that nature. I'd be interested to see what happens when it goes wider. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully IBM comes up with some, that, but I thought it was pretty interesting to see you could add another uh, line of defense to, to be proactive, help spot breaches, hacking attempts that may go unnoticed because they, it can also catalog um, traffic, right? And then if something seems out of the norm, they can spot that pick up on it and say, Hey, you need to go look at this. So I thought it was pretty cool. Sorry. I was distracted because I was reading your one story to see if it was, suitable for the show um <laughs> that got a little racy i don't yeah well they, they'll just say it goes along with the um other well, you could check our show notes to see what we're talking about um no i i think yeah i mean this is it definitely makes sense it definitely makes sense with this um because i mean people can only cover so many well and you, can, you only have so much money to, to hire people yeah. to, to monitor so I, I thought it was a pretty pretty cool way of helping out if you haven't yet, Pokemon Go celebrating virtual uh, Valentine's Day virtually uh, by unleashing pink characters. Turning cool. up the spawn rate on all of your jiggly poofs and Clefairies out there. And, I have so uh, many Clefairies. That I know. Like, you know I know. Jiggly just, poofs I need more of. Well, now is the time to get your jiggly poof on. Um, so, so there <laughs> you go. That sounds and, dirty. And also more candies will be out there as well for you to pick up. What's that? That's your show title. Get your Jigglypoof on. Get your Jigglypoof on with <laughs> your lady. Jeez. Um, uh, also, video game related. E3 tickets on sale to the public this year. I, which I'm, I'm, I'm sad because somebody was talking about how like I'm completely starting a video game site so I can get the E3. <laughs> now you don't have to. So that project just went away. Uh, so, so there you go. Um, a lot well, of other. I wonder, go ahead. I wonder what that'll do to a, to attendance from a a crowd perspective. Because if you remember back in the day, going to New York City Comic Con, right? The crowds every year just got more and it, more unbearable. It was so yeah, it was so unbearable by the time I got back there, like two or three years later. So and and I know they've had some dips in in attendance numbers, and they're trying to to bring those numbers back up. But I I would hope that they don't oversell, right? The, right the tickets because it just it, then it becomes another bad experience and are they trying to compete with like i you know packs and stuff like that showing that hey fans are want to come to this and this is how you can do it or i mean it's a trade show originally right mm -hmm. and it's just very interesting that they, they're doing this other stories that we, we have so many so much in here this week guys uh toyota demos window to the world vehicle backseat smart window technology um Girl finds out about her cheating boyfriend via Burger King Instagram comments. Oops. Whoopsie. <laughs> well, there, there was a guy, too, that just sued Uber for like $48 yeah. million because his, his wife caught him cheating because of an, a glitch in the Uber app. And like she was getting the notifications or yeah. something, right? So, yeah. And, of course, all the big news. Ford Motor Company announced $1 billion, Got the finger up. For the billion, uh, one billion dollar investment into a Pittsburgh-based AI company to develop autonomous vehicles. Uh, Mayor Perdido warned that, uh, "Hey, Uber isn't the only game in town, and if they don't want to play ball, because I understand Uber may not have uh, owned up to the uh, promises that they made to the city." Mm. Uh, I think they've, they've uh, just been a little bit uncooperative with uh, with uh, some of the, the things that the city would like to get in return for um, being the testing ground for the for the. Right. Uh, uh, the uh, so, um, and it's an interesting kind of political thing here to to put a little pressure on them. Um, in addition to this being being a, a, a pretty cool thing on its own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really good article on Wired about the next bl big blue collar job is coding. Because, you know, 
we'll, we'll let you get into it. But basically, and actually, I think one of them was about <laughs> a company that was turning um, old. I want to say it was miners or people in like one of those, you know, coming from like one of those towns devastated by one of those industries going away, um, were uh, you know retraining people to code, and it is something that people, you know, will get will will they need basically people to chip away at code mm-hmm. at this point, you know, and it does became become a kind of a, a a task that you can kind of distribute like that, so definitely. And we're getting things like code camp, code boot camps, like Academy Pittsburgh here in town, and everything too. So much more in here, more than more than I can get. In, even though Naughty wants the chilla puts in here. Did Did you see that um, Amazon came out with their own conferencing solution? Really? So yeah, today they announced Chime. Um, what? it's another video conferencing <laughs> tool. The The odd part is is it's for the for the pro version like what we do from to me what it sounds like from for what we do with hangouts mm-hmm. it's 15 dollars per user per month per user per month yeah so like if you wanted each oh. one of us in like i mean maybe that that's for maybe that works for for enterprise but i can't it, it is it is kind of targeted at the enterprise and and more of the the microsoft skype and cisco market mm-hmm. but it just seems expensive Maybe it's one of those things that comes down over time. Yeah, that I don't know. But it, but to me, it looks like like another WebEx or Skype for Business or or Cisco WebEx type. Because we need platform. another one of those for people to misuse. Trust me, I've been on some WebExes uh, lately. What's interesting is, is I think when you when they bring these capabilities and you know usually they pick something or they have some cool whiz bang capability that no one else has or that's that's. Not necessarily perfect. I, I think mm-hmm. what this brings is is just another good competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, they have their Amazon Web Services backend uh, to do all the heavy Which lifting. I have been enjoying on my re-implementation of IndieWrestling.us, and it looks like it's it's rather affordable in the mm-hmm. long run too. So looking looking forward to using that and hopefully using it as a development platform for the ship for the site growing. To be one, honest, one of the cool things they did have is is that if you're if you accept a meeting invite and are confirmed. It will actually call you. Ooh! So I thought that was a pretty neat way to do it. So it, like, when the meeting starts, it just calls everyone. Oh, nice! Yeah. So because there's was... a lot of the. Are you going to call me? How are we doing this? Yeah. You know, who who calls who here? What's happening? Yeah. So there you go. Amazon Chime. Look out for it. Coming up: events, boot camp, pod camp, boot camp, mobile apps for content creation. <sighs> it is going to be um, uh, Wednesday night, uh, this the fifteenth, February fifteenth, at uh, six p.m. over at Carnegie. Uh, library here in Beachview. I think Missy is going to be leading that as well. We're going to talk things like, you know, making images and making videos on your applications, on your phone, things like the Adobe Spark um, application that I've talked about a lot on this show and things like that. Evening with PodCamp, musicians and social media will be Thursday the 16th. That's going to be up at at uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh. Again, I think the uh, panel is going to start at 7 p.m. Uh, Brian from the River's Edge is going to join us to to lead that panel. Some really good musicians from around the area are going to be part of that. Podcast Brunch Club is uh, Sunday the 19th. Oh, we got something else? Yeah, I was going to say if we could actually go back to that PodCamp Pittsburgh thing. Uh, some of the local artists that we've got involved in this, uh, like you said, they're pretty cool artists that we've got involved. So I'm pulling that up right now. But uh, thanks to Brian with the river's edge and uh, Amanda Narcissi with bold Pittsburgh. Uh, we have Mario Quinn, Liz victory, Palermo stone and Jeremy K Wood as part of that all talking about how they use social media for, for promotion for their, their arts and, and their music. Awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be looking to live stream that as well. So keep an eye out that. Keep an eye out for that podcast brunch club. Uh, this is, uh, if you do a search on Facebook for this, it's going to be this Sunday and it looks like they're, they're going to be listening to a few podcasts and kind of having a chat around it. It looks like a pretty cool concept. Uh, we have no involvement in it. Just something I saw come across my desk. Um, Sorgatron media coffee will be on the 26th. If you'll come by and chat with us and some of our podcast buddies and talk about what projects you're working on and just talk about making creative things in social media, whatever you guys want to chat about. And the next pod camp boot camp is going to be, uh, for next month for march will be on the 15th and it'll be about blogging with squarespace if you want to learn about that so follow uh podcamp pittsburgh and sorgatron media on facebook for updates on all of these and on twitter and twitter and uh 
join our newsletters because uh, there's information coming out as far as those are concerned as well. Right. Um, I don't think we have a sign up on Awesome Cast. We go to sorgatronmedia.com for yeah, that newsletter. Yeah, Sorgatron Media. We'll, so. we'll take care of that. Uncle Crappy, thank you so much. That's my microphone. There it is. Um, <laughs> Uncle Crappy, thank you so much for joining us. I am happy to, to, to be here. Um, you guys can uh, always uh, check out uh, post-gazette.com slash beer me to see the uh, my, my primary creative outlet, uh, a series about craft brewing in and around Pittsburgh. Um, I think probably soon to feature this grip gear movie maker set because this thing is freaking awesome and i i, I must <laughs> i've got to i've got to have one there you go go check it out at uh the post gazette beer me for all you beer me people um john chichilla is at chilla tech.net at chilla on the twitters john chichilla on the facebook come talk to me come talk ask questions and if you're into any kind of uh mobile gaming let me know and we can we can get a guild together, depending on what game you're playing. There you go. <laughs> uh, some some comments from the chat room uh, tonight. Uh, so uh, uh, Juggalo John's been in there. He's a frequent frequenter on here. And hello, also John O in there. There's a new face uh, uh, popped in earlier tonight. Um, he's wondering if Uber is going to pull in Austin, Texas, and pretty much uh, get kicked out or kick themselves out. Actually, is what Austin did. Uh, they did in Austin because they didn't disagree with what Austin wanted to do for for a role, I think. Um, and he says, yeah, the retro box thing so far are boxes that don't really work. So I'm iffy on whether that will work out in the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit iffy about that, too. Uh, but a cool concept. A cool <coughs> concept in general. Uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter for me, SorgatronMedia.com is a good place to start. and links to all the businesses and podcasts that you might be interested in. Again, sign up for the newsletter for updates and some wonderful articles that Missy's been writing lately as part of Sidekick Media Services. Um, thank you so much for joining us. AwesomeCast.net, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast if you want to support the show that way. And uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.